Hi, I'm Dr. Vonda Wright, and welcome to the ninth class on the Roadmap to Resilience. Today, we're talking about something that may surprise you as a tool to build your hardiness and resilience, play. You know, some of you believe that play is something that you have to give up when you become an adult, that it's only the work of children. But a large body of research shows that play can relieve stress in adults. It can build creativity. It can be key in team building. So I don't want you to forget as we're adults in our busy, busy lives, when we're taking care of everyone else to take care of ourselves by taking a few minutes out every day to play, to stay in the moment. Our family has six children. And when we get together, even though five of them are adults, they will spontaneously start playing games where they're kicking around an actual ball or they wad up a big piece of paper and start playing hacky sack or tag. That has been the case throughout our entire lives. And in that moment, they're not busy professionals. They're not responsible for the livelihoods of other people. They're once again taking care of themselves by doing what they've always done which is playing together and it relieves their stress. It renews their bonds of family and friendship. And it's amazing to watch. So today in this class of Roadmap to Resilience, we're talking about our surprise tool, play. I define play as any joyful act where you forget about time where there is no purpose, there is no result. You don't have anxiety about the future. You don't have regrets about the past. You are fully in the moment. You are fully in flow. Someone that is resilient is able to just experience joy and fulfillment wherever they are at that current moment in time. And I think a lot of times we forget that as adults. The reason why kids are so happy is because they are able to be in the moment. And we as adults have forgotten how to get there. Play is rooted in curiosity, experimentation, wonder, awe, you know, this idea of embracing failure. Play is going to help you actually enjoy your life and find more fulfillment in your life. When you see the world as play, like I actually prime my day by playing to begin my day, I make like a ridiculous video to start my day, that everything then in my mind, I see as play. So I don't get as fixated on the results, which provides me so much more resiliency to just like navigate a really crazy chaotic world. Laughter, smiling, humor, um, just allowing ourselves to feel bursts of, of positive emotion, even joy, is definitely a tool that can help us when we're coping with highly aversive events. It's not a panacea, it doesn't work all the time, but when it does work, it's really great because it gives us kind of a respite. It allows us to take just a momentary break. And laughter is also socially bonding. When we laugh, other people feel connected to us and that enhances our social world a little bit. It's a tool that we can use if we use it at the right time, but it's definitely a good tool that I think is underappreciated. Play is really key to building resilience. In my current work as an elementary school principal, a large amount of our children have experienced some degree of trauma in their lives. One thing that we have done at our school is incorporated play therapy for a lot of our children. So play has been really powerful for so many of our students and there are countless, endless stories um, to really prove that impact. Play really provides children, adults, with a means to process and work through those feelings of fear, anxiety, and uncertainty. We are busy people and play can feel like another item on the to-do list. But I would argue that play can really actually increase your productivity. And so I encourage everyone to really carve out some time in their day to do something that they enjoy. Start off small so that you can experience the benefits of play and then build upon that. Maybe that five or 10 minute walk 
uh, turns into getting together with friends for a 30 minute walk or that drawing and sketching turns into taking up an art class, but you'll get more time back from incorporating play into your daily routine. I strongly believe, feel within all of the fibers of my existence that play fosters healthy mental health. That's where you get comfortable. That's where you develop your sense of confidence without feeling like you've done too much or too little, taken too much or too little from somebody because it happens naturally. You wanna play with somebody, you want them to be able to play with you, you have to compromise. You know, you have to have a meeting of the minds. You have to be able to say, I would like to do this. And then they say, I would like to do that. Or they say, yes, I would like to do the same thing. That is communicating. And that's where we develop a healthy society, a healthy community. That's where, that's where they grow into real people. It starts with play. A way to build my resilience is to, uh, smile and laugh and find a lot of laughter to relax my physical body. There is science out there that um, laughter helps us uh, move into more of a state of rest and digest and relax. And um, so I try to laugh at least uh, once a day. Now that you've learned all about how to use play as a tool on your roadmap to resilience, we have three pieces of homework we'd like you to try. Identify what soothes you. You can't play when you're anxious or angry. What works for you? Going for a walk, taking a shower, playing sports. You know what works for you. Next time you're feeling anxious or sad, you have one coping mechanism at your fingertips. You just have to do it. Get bored. Stop watching Netflix and looking at social media for about 30 minutes a day. When you're not flooding your mind with information, you start getting all kinds of ideas. Your intuition tells you what you really want, whether for you it's taking a walk or going for a run or just completely unplugging. It's an amazing way to settle your mind and re-engage with who you are. So in these 30 minutes, ask yourself, what would make me happy right now? What would excite me? What would fulfill me? Reach out to three to five of your friends and ask them two important questions. What about our friendship do you value? How do I contribute to that? Is there any way I have had an impact on your life? A lot of times we don't even realize what we've done for other people. When they have seen you at your happiest, your most creative, most like yourself, understanding someone else's perspective on why you matter can help you reconnect to your real self. And that may open new opportunities for you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to tune in next month for our 10th and final class in our Roadmap to Resilience.